um, in a positive direction. You're helping to do that by bringing attention and putting a spotlight uh, well deservedly on these shows with so much heart. And so that coincidence we were touching on with uh, Elizabeth Montgomery and Mary Tyler Moore, I think this is, uh, I'm just going to bring up another quantum consciousness concept. This is entanglement. And I know typically, I, I do have a physics degree from UC Berkeley, and I know most physicists would tell you, when you use the word entanglement, you have to be careful because you're only talking about quantum particles. And again, on this, on this podcast, what I'm pointing out is uh, quantum physics is everywhere. And as um, Herbie J. Pilato is reminding us today, love is everything. And that is the basis that holds us together. And to me, to my way of viewing this, there's no magic at work other than love and the love that we're seeing with coincidences is extraordinary to me it makes it helps me feel um, excited and reverent to recognize that the universe is huge these connections are amazing and they really can bring us together um, well you know that that is really fascinating what you're saying as i'm a you know big believer in uh, life after death and i've studied near-death experiences i've have many friends who have had near-death experiences, real, legitimate experiences. And I was just watching an NDE video on YouTube the other day where this um, soldier went to what he believed was, what it was heaven. And anyway, he came back to Earth, and he was this quantum scientist, physicist, too, person, very genius like you. And he, once he realized, yes, he did go to heaven, and then he realized that he had to figure everything out in quantum physics here and, and blah, 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 blah. And he went through all these calculations. And at the end of the calculations, he goes, well, okay, yes, love is connected. And oh, my God, what a complete waste of time that I studied all of those quantum physics because all I had to understand is that love is the answer. <laughs> oh, my gosh, I love it. <laughs> well, I think it's good to study physics, though. But go ahead. I love this. <laughs> no, I mean, of course it is. I mean, uh, but it was just so funny that he said that he felt he, you know, all he had to do was, um, is, uh, realize that love is the answer. Well, you know, as you understand, you know, when you're, when you're a creative love based person, it's hard to understand physics and math. At least we think it is. I am. I mean, that is like the other side of my brain. And then when you're a, a, phys a physicist or a scientist or a mathematician, you know, you're, you appear to be colder, but you're really not. You, you have just as much love inside of you as any creative person, but it's sometimes for the scientific mind, it's more difficult to express themselves creatively, which is why I say everybody should take a dance and acting and a, a singing, uh, uh, not to mention a writing course. Yeah. Um, but the, 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 the bottom line is we're all connected, as you said. You yeah. know, it's all magic. And, you know, love created science you know love to me is god and mm -hmm. god created science so there is no separation between church and state and heaven um it's there might be a separation here but there is none really in in the reality of the universe oh my gosh did i just say that okay <laughs> it's perfect i love it and i agree perfect and this brings to mind this, um, let's get back to Mary Tyler Moore, because I, I want to talk about this beautiful book you've written. You mentioned in the book that uh, Mary Tyler Moore has been uh, observed. Actually, this, I didn't get this from your book. I, I do outside research as well. So I have to admit, this one came from the IMDB website. I just wanted to, you know, just to see how your book fits in with what other people are saying. It's spot on, of course. Uh, but someone pointed out that Mary Tyler Moore was the least egocentric actress in her or any other lifetime. There's just someone commenting on the movies. And I was wondering if you feel this would be a true assessment of Mary, you know, on and off screen. Um, <laughs> well, I'm going to say no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, good. Let's just bring you. You've got so much um, stuff in the book. Yeah. You, you, you can't be in the art industry. Um, and not have an ego. You can't be a human being and not have an ego. It's just not regular. Right. Um, you know, human beings are, we are in this world because we, you know, we fell from heaven, however you want to name that. And in this world is a broken world. It's not heaven. 
So there are things such as ego. And, and Mary on, um, had a very healthy ego. Um, you know, number one, you know, she wanted to be a star. And that's what she said. I want to be a star. And okay. she had said that from when she was a child. Um, and when she ultimately did the Dick Van Dyke show, which was her big break, um, she met her husband, Grant Tinker, her second husband, Grant Tinker, um, who really was responsible for putting her in the forefront of the Dick Van Dyke show. Grant was in one of the ad executives who worked on that show to help promote the show. So he met Mary on the set and Mary had already been married to her first husband, Richard Meeker, and that ended in divorce. And Richard Meeker was a wonderful guy and they had a beautiful son who unfortunately, tragically uh, died of a self-afflicted uh, gun wound or gunshot, not suicide has been sometimes uh, said. Thank you. Um, but Mary, um, you know, she, her husband said, look, you gotta be, you gotta be in this show and you gotta, you gotta be more than just the, the wife at home. And that put up a, a wall between her and Rose Marie, who played Sally Rogers on the show because Rose Marie thought, it, you know, she was only going to be the female star of the show and that wasn't the case. So somebody who has a husband who says you're going to be a star does uh-huh. not have a small ego, you know? That's right. That's right. Um, Thank you for that clarification. And I, I think on this show, lots of people are spiritual. And sometimes in the people who are focusing on spirituality, there can be a tendency to think egoless is perfect. But actually, I don't know that that's true. To me, the ego is the middle chakras, the middle energy centers, and we need all of our energy centers. So a proper balance would be to be humble, to be respectful, all the qualities that you're talking about from classic TV shows. Um, but of course, you can still have a strong ego within all of that. Well, provided you're respectful. certainly, I mean... Life is about, I mean, we're here to learn, um, you know, people say, does God punish us or whatever? I don't believe God punishes us. I believe sometimes we punish ourselves by separating ourselves from love, which is God. And whatever lessons we have to learn in this broken world, and it is a broken world, it is totally imperfect. Um, we, the lesson, the, mo- the biggest lesson I think is humility. I mean, we, when we make mistakes, it hurts, and we humble ourselves in those mistakes. So I think that's the biggest lesson. And Mary was full of those kinds of mistakes, you know, and she, only she never again found weekly hit television as she did with Dick Van Dyke or Mary Tyler Moore show. She tried yeah. to, but it well, didn't happen again. So she was humbled by that. Yes. And you know, it started with the Dick Van Dyke show. Dick Van Dyke, as you did point out in your book, in one interview, he said Mary was one of the few who could maintain her femininity and be funny at the same time. Mm. And that really was a special quality. And I think I think this has to do with what you're saying right now, that sometimes uh, she would be humbled. You know, she'd, I think people could sense that about Mary, that she was being so authentic. You know, she's acting, yes, but there was something beautiful. I think that charisma may be partly due to this quality. Well, she, you know, people had said, every time they would see her, they go, oh boy, I wish I could be like Mary Richards, which was her character's name in the Mary Tyler Moore show. And she would respond and she'd say, yeah, I wish I could be like her too. <laughs> um, Mary was, um, and she had, you know, the great thing about her that whatever I'm going to say in this in this interview or whatever I wrote about in the book, she had admitted to, she had admitted that she was a a complex person. She had admitted that she wasn't always the nicest person. Um, She was always good to her fans. I have to say that whenever they approached her, Um, but she was, you know, she was tough. You know, you don't get to be the head of a major successful, huge production company like MTM enterprises and not be tough. And when you're tough, you don't always have, you can't always be nice, but she was always professional, you know, um, but she was obsessed with plastic surgery. There was a lack of self-love there. Uh, she was, a. she didn't have the closest, uh, fe- she didn't know how to have close female friends. She had very, very few. One of whom was, um, Hope Lang, actress Hope Lang, who starred on the new Dick Van Dyke show, uh, which happened around the Mary Tyler Moore show. 
Um, she played Dick Van Dyke's wife, and she called him Mary Tyler Moore. She said, you know, we both played Dick Van Dyke's wife on TV. I think we should be friends. Uh, she was friends with Betty White. She was friends with um, um, oh, darn it. Beverly Sanders, who was an actress, who still is an actress. Um, but she didn't have a lot of close friends, whereas Mary Richards and Laura Petrie well, had tons of friends. Um, so it's really interesting that, you know, so many women adored Mary and so many women were inspired by Mary, uh, the character, um, and, uh, and whatnot, and did so, did so much for female empowerment. But a, a big part of female empowerment is knowing how to have friends. And, and Mary did not know how to do that, you know, which, and friendship is tough. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've lost friends. We all lose friends. We all can't keep friends. It's tough. It's like a marriage. Every friendship is a marriage in a way. And when you think about who, who could be her friend and how many close friends can you have that really get who Mary was, you know, at that time, it, maybe it is a small handful of people, and that's okay. It's okay to just have a Absolutely. few. Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely right. Yeah. I mean, you know, when you're a star, it's tough to have any kind of relationship. That's right. Um, you know, you, your, your life is your career. And when you're a star, and Mary was a superstar. She sure was. And part of the success, as you know, would, could be credited with the excellent writers that she was working with, such as Carl Reiner, who really contributed to creating that Dick Van Dyke show. And she, Mary obviously appreciated him, as you mentioned in the book, um, that she once said, Carl comes up with a lot of unlikely comedy ideas, but he always makes them funny. I trust him yeah. so much that if he were to have me get a divorce on the show and run off with a traveling salesman, I'd say great idea because I know somehow he'd make it amusing. <laughs> yeah, certainly. And, and Bill Persky, who was one of the writers on the Dick Van Dyke show, was, became very good friends with Mary uh, till the day she passed away. As a matter of fact, he had written a one-woman show for her. Um, her husband had asked him, her husband, her third husband being Dr. Robert Levine, who she stayed married to for 30 years and who was completely dedicated and devoted to her. Dr. Levine had asked Mary to, or had asked Bill Persky to write a stage show for Mary. Um, and he did. And unfortunately she, in the end, she was too weak to even attempt to get it um, on stage. But that would have been kind of an amazing thing if that would, would have happened. Oh, that's so, so wonderful. Is, Yes. That he remained friends with this writer, Bill Persky, and he was a male, and there was no romance between them. Um, right. I, I think for a minute there was a possibility, but Bill had, had said that, you know, he, he wasn't the romantic type that she was attracted to. Much like when, if you remember when Lou Grant, uh, Lou Grant and Mary Richards decided yes. to go on a date on the Mary Tyler Moore show. Uh -huh. Yes. It, it, it was kind of like that, you know, where they're like, this isn't going to work. You know, we're right. friends. So. And I think that's such a good thing to show. I'm glad you brought that up because it indicates another example of how these classic TV shows can show us um, some great truths that are applicable in our times in a positive way. That, you know, that give us that, those kind of insights so we don't need to go explore that in real life ourselves unless we want to. But Yes, yeah. yes. And, and there's, you know, there's so many... There's so much talent out there today in films and in on television, but it's such misguided talent, in my opinion. I mean, the vulgarity and the violence and, you know, the, just because you can swear and, you know, for freedom of speech or whatever, doesn't mean you have to swear and say the F word every two seconds. You know, um, it, it loses its power. And we see this all the time, not to mention that there's mumbling and I can't understand a lot of the characters because the actors are mumbling and the sound mixing is all wrong because everything, the special effects is so loud and all the cinematography is so dark. You can't see anybody. I mean, you watch a 1960s TV show like the, uh, the Dick Van Dyke show or, or a 70s show like the Mary Tyler Moore show or Bewitch, you can see these characters. You know, you can understand what they're saying. The diction is clear and yeah. you just don't have that kind of finesse in television today. That's you just right. don't. 
you don't. And the characterization seems sh sloppy and um, unfortunate.